Hi and welcome to a new video here on my YouTube channel. So on Thursday I just released a video about AMD Pinnacle Rich Extreme Overclocking and I just saw that somebody commented on the video why I did not do deleting of those CPUs. So I asked myself the same question and just thought okay let's do it. So let's see how uh, AMD Pinnacle Rich CPU looks inside. This video is brought to you by the Seasonic Prime 80 Plus Titanium Power Supply. With the Prime series, Seasonic offers a high quality lineup, which I have been using for many years in my systems and also for extreme overclocking. For me personally, the hybrid mode is the most important feature. While the 135mm fan is very quiet in general, the hybrid mode allows the fan to only run when it's really necessary. 94% efficiency combined with fully modular cable management and 12 years of warranty speaks for itself. Today we will deal with the AMD Ryzen 5 2600. Simply it's the same CPU physically as the 2700X 8 core CPU and I only have one 2700X 8 core CPU at the moment so I didn't want to sacrifice this CPU for this video. That's why we will take the Ryzen 5 2600 for this try. Looking at the temperatures of the AMD Pinnacle Rich CPU, so for example 2700X under load I'm pretty sure that they are soldered. I mean the temperatures compared to Raven Rich look a lot better considering that the power consumption is also a lot higher so I'm really sure that they're soldered so yeah it doesn't make deleting easier but we will still do it. I learned from AMD Ravenridge deleting that we can actually also use the Debauer Delete Dimate 2 for deleting AMD CPUs so it's quite funny that the cutout which is in here which is originally made for Intel PCBs so for example an 8700K is exactly the same size as the heat spreader of the AMD CPUs so we can just use the Delete Dimate 2 but we have to use some additional tools. So for AMD Ravenridge deleting I made those small acrylic cutouts to distribute the force across the PCB of the CPU because we're essentially pushing with this part against the CPU against the CPU PCB and the problem is that there are only two small corners that are actually touching the PCB and the force you need to delete a CPU like this especially when they're soldered is quite a lot so I made those acrylic cutouts to distribute the force across the whole side of the PCB. Since we're assuming that those CPUs are soldered we cannot use the acrylic because my plan is to put the CPU into the Dele Dimate 2 with those aluminium parts then push a little bit against it, put it in the oven at around 170 degrees celsius, wait until the CPU is warm enough and then delete the CPU. And the issue is that the acrylic is simply not capable of handling 170 degrees celsius, it would melt, that's why we will use those small acrylic, um, those small aluminium cutouts I made for this video. When Summit Ridge was released, so 1800X, I made a similar video also including direct die cooling. The results were not that impressive, but I still did some testing beforehand with the Ryzen 5 2600. So I clocked it to 4100 MHz at 1.35 volt, did some Cinebench runs, recorded the temperature, so we can at least see if there would be a theoretically theoretical benefit of deleting your CPU. So I will just place this camera on this table so we can record close up of the deleting process. Before I will do the actual deleting and heating up the CPU inside the oven, I will first cut out with a razor blade a little bit around it. That's mainly to loosen the, the IHS a little bit because from experience from Raven Ridge deleting, the force you need for deleting those CPUs is really quite a lot. And I wanna uh, make the force a little bit smaller just to protect the CPU, that's why I will cut uh, carefully around the IHS. So actually it worked quite nicely, so I simply cut around in each corner first and then also from each side carefully. This time I left the CPU on the table just to protect the pins a little bit. Um, yeah, the pins look quite nice, no pin was bent. It's not really an issue on the PGA socket to straighten the pins if they were bent, but yeah, avoiding is a lot easier. Yeah, so I will just put the CPU into the Dele Dimate 2 now. Since we don't really know how the CPU looks inside, it also doesn't really matter how we align it. Should not be an issue, we will just be careful with the deleting process. So put in the CPU, 
Then put in the small two aluminium pieces, as I said before, to distribute the load of the slider a little bit across the PCB. Put in the slider. Remove the washer because this is also plastic. I don't want to put this at 200 degrees Celsius in my oven. Put in the screw carefully. This is also a quite crucial part because yeah, you can easily bend the pins while you put in the screw. Okay, so yeah, last step is just attaching thermometer to the Delidyme 2. Now I will heat it up to around 170, 180 degrees Celsius. And then we will come back and see how the CPU looks inside. So once the Delta Dimate hit around 180 degrees Celsius, I removed it from the oven, then removed the temperature sensor from Delta Dimate and started slowly and carefully tightening the screw. And as you can see, the PCB moves so easily, just that's mainly because we removed the glue or cut the glue first between the IHS and the PCB. Now carefully remove the screw and then we're ready to remove the PCB itself from the IHS. Maybe you shouldn't use a knife for this, but I was really careful and sure it wouldn't damage the CPU. But as you can see, successful delete and you can also see CPU is soldered. So as we assumed, you can see CPUs are soldered. We can see that there are some indium residues on the chip. You can also see the heat better. We have some indium residues also on here. Also, don't be confused. There's always like a line here in the middle. And that's mainly because when they solder those CPUs, they have two indium plates, two indium sheets that are quite small, like a square centimeter, one here, one here, and those together solder the heat spreader to the CPU. So it's not like, because you can see this line, it's not like this is, there are two pieces of silicon on here. It's just one piece. Don't be confused by this line. Also, what's kind of interesting is that those SMD um, capacitors should be, I think those are SMD caps. They're a little bit closer to the die than comparing Summit Ridge, which is kind of a change. Also on Raven Ridge, they were very close to the edge of the heat spreader. So that's new. And I mean, this is 12 nanometers and Summit Ridge, the 1800X was uh, 14 nanometers. So there should be a difference in die size, but it looks pretty much the same. So we will just measure size of the die. So this should be 9.8 millimeter times 22 millimeter, which is actually the same as Summit Ridge. So this should be like 215 square millimeters. I thought that I was a little bit smaller, which is um, surprising. Either I'm wrong, either I did my math wrong or the die size uh, stayed the same for some reason. Not really sure why that is the case, but looks like it's exactly the same size um, die size as the Summit Ridge CPU. So if we take a closer look at the heat spreader, you can see the gold plating inside, which we have seen several times before on my YouTube channel. So the gold plating, I will just repeat it, is necessary for best wetting conditions of the indium. So the indium sheets stick very well to the nickel plated copper surface on a long time. So because you have the thermal cycling of the CPU when the CPU is getting hot and cold, there's a lot of stress to the indium because of the different thermal expansion of the die and the heat spreader, that's why you need a certain thickness of the indium sheet. That's why it also kind of makes sense to remove the indium and replace it with liquid metal. The liquid metal has a worse conductivity, but the, th the thickness, the layer of the, the thermal interface material will be a lot less using liquid metal. Therefore, the result should be lower in theory than using the indium sheet. But still, as you can see, soldered, nothing really changed from Summit Ridge CPU. So I will now simply scratch off the indium from both dye and heat spreader and then we will do some uh, temperature tests before and after deleting.
So I cleaned both heat spatter and CPU entirely. So I removed all the indium, scratched it off from heat spatter and from the CPU. I also removed all the glue that was on the heat spatter before with the razor blade. I will not remove the glue that's on here. I already tried it, put the heat spreader back on the CPU. It has a perfect contact on here, so no need for me to scratch off the glue for now. Um, yeah, we will just apply some liquid metal on both uh, dye and heat spreader and see what the temperature gain could be, theoretically. But before we will do that, I actually have one of the dyes I took off one of my Threadripper CPUs some months ago. And this is also what I have as a background image on my desktop always. So this is the 14 nanometer summit ridge based CPU. We will just put it on here. And from what I can see, this is exactly the same die size. So the top one that I just placed on there is 14 nanometer. The bottom one, the 2600 should be 12 nanometer. So I kind of thought it would be a little bit smaller that the die would be smaller because it's 12 and not, and, uh, not 14 nanometer, but seems like the die size is exactly the same as before. So that's also interesting. Maybe I was wrong there. Maybe there was some something I missed. Maybe if you have more infos about the die sizes, uh, just put it in the comments. I would be really interested to see if there was anything I missed about this topic. So I will just apply liquid metal now onto CPU and heat spreader and then we will do the thermal testing. So I'm done with the thermal testing. So basically just took the Ryzen 5 2600, put it back on the Asus Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard, did exactly the same testing as before, same conditions. So overclocked the CPU again, 4.1 gigahertz, 1.35 volt, went into Windows, did five runs of Cinebench R15 and then recorded the max core temperature using hardware info. And I recorded the temperature, which is recorded as t die, so it should be the temperature without offset. And before deleting, the maximum temperature of the CPU was 64 degrees Celsius. After deleting, it was 60 degrees Celsius, the hottest run of five times Cinebench R15. So we have a benefit of four degrees Celsius. By the way, the CPU was cooled by a Kraken X62. So yeah, four degrees Celsius for deleting is not really worth it in my eyes. So if you have any kind of friends, anyone who maybe is asking the question, hey, should I delete my soldered Ryzen CPU or should I delete the 2700X? Just simply send him the link and tell him not to do it because seriously, I mean, deleting a, a solar CPU is quite a significant risk and taking this risk for four to five degrees Celsius in my eyes is absolutely not worth it because you will not have any gains from it. You will not be able to clock higher or anything from uh, lowering the temperature by four degrees Celsius. So everything went kind of as expected. CPU is soldered, so that's a good thing. Also temperature gain is exactly what we would expect, exactly what we had when we were deleting the 1800X. So nothing surprising. The only thing that really surprised me was that the die size is the same. Maybe I missed something. Maybe it's supposed to be the same die size, even if it's 12 nanometer instead of 14 nanometer. If I missed something and you have any more infos, please put it in the comments so I can also educate myself. So I hope you enjoyed this video, enjoy the rest of your weekend and see you next time.